So I'm going to read now from this essay of mine uh, on Alfred North Whitehead and contemporary scientific cosmology, uh, and I'm going to read a section that's called The Imaginative Generalization of Evolutionary Theory. And um, just prior to this, I was going into uh, Alfred North Whitehead's similarities and differences with um, the contemporary um, um, biological anthropologist and systems theorist, I think you could say in the most general sense, Terence Deacon. He re recently uh, published a book called Incomplete Nature, How Mind Emerged from Matter. It was just published last year. And um, I point out that while both of them are trying to bring what used to be called formal cause, uh, formal causation, and what used to be called final causation back into science's understanding of the natural world. That, in, in fact, Whitehead's attempt to do so is, is more radical than Deacon's, and that Deacon's position, much like Professor Anton's position, who I, I discussed in my last video, is that um, value or purpose, uh, intentionality, it emerges at the level of biological entities, organisms, and that there is a pre-organismic, merely material realm that existed prior to the emergence of organisms, and that um, has no value, no experiential dimension, no interiority or purpose or anything like that. Now, the reason Whitehead's more radical is that, uh, as I discussed in my last video, he wants to say that, no, the inorganic is itself a form of organism. Um, and, and to refine that seemingly contradictory statement a bit, what Whitehead is saying is that um, the science of ecology, of the relationships among organisms, is the most general science. And that, in this sense, physics is a special case of ecology. Uh, and that biological organisms, that um, particular set of creatures that exists you know, between chemistry um, and psychology in the normal um, you know, hierarchy of causes in the natural sciences, the, the sort of reductionistic hierarchy, um, that what, what we call biological entities at that mesoscale are in fact just a special case of a more general form of organism, of physical organization, uh, and and that what what there is in the most in the widest sense is an ecology of um, subatomic and atomic and stellar and galactic um, and on Earth um, biological organisms. There's a set of the, the universe is a is a community of organisms at all these scales. Um, and, you know, Deacon and Corey Anton um, don't want to go this far. And I think there's a residual form of, um, of, of materialism here in that they're unwilling to be uh, metaphysical enough. Um, you know, I think uh, it's challenging to want to do metaphysics in the wake of so much of 20th century deconstruction and postmodernism and, and so on. But the way in which Whitehead does metaphysics is not the old, you know, in uh, classical sense of trying to um, deduce a, a totalizing systematic explanation for everything that there is kind of a priori, like, um, without the need for any experiential or experimental engagement with the actual world. You know, Whitehead's not a metaphysician of that sort. His metaphysics is more of an aesthetic adventure in, um, in creativity that calls us to um, adapt and respond to a universe in process, a universe that is always becoming something new and that in order to understand that newness, that novelty, we need to also find a way of talking about the imminence of, of God in the world as a kind of a cosmic value that gives shape at the most general level to everything that 
that we do, um, not only as human beings, but as earthlings, as members of this solar system and this galaxy, everything that we do is organized in the way that, that it is because of some overriding value that is guiding the evolution of the entire uh, cosmos. At least that's the wager that someone like Whitehead is making. So I just want to read this one section. Um, sorry for the long preface. Again, this is called uh, The Imaginative Generalization of Evolutionary Theory. Let me begin with a quote from Whitehead uh, from his book Religion in the Making. He says, In the most literal sense, the lapse of time is the renovation of the world with ideas. The universe is passing with a slowness, inconceivable in our measures of time, to new creative conditions, amid which the physical world, as we presently know it, will be represented by a ripple barely to be distinguished from non-entity. End quote. <clears throat> the chapter begins. The main outlines of the doctrine of evolution on Whitehead's reading must be, quote, absorbed as the guiding methodology of all branches of science. Evolution must become the most general science, in other words, or an evolutionary ecology, as I was saying before. Grasping the transdisciplinary significance of evolution requires the negative capability mentioned earlier, a willingness to consign oneself to the speculative risks Whitehead's philosophy of organism has proposed for thinking. Because all our knowledge depends upon abstraction, the point is not to avoid it, but to do it gently, such that our knowing leaves the concrete life of the world unharmed and intact. Whitehead's contribution to the philosophical integration of the special sciences and their abstract domains of relevance is derived from what he calls his method of, quote, imaginative generalization. Metaphysics is the imaginative attempt to express in language the most general features of experience, and therefore, of nature. Every special science devises its own instruments. The instrument of metaphysics, the science of sciences, is language. Like physics, metaphysics should be taken as an experimental practice, should be undertaken as an experimental practice. Only the experiments are to be performed on language itself. 